So, uh, so yeah, that's me. Um, so who am I, what do I do, and why am I here? So um, I'm a highways professional for about 25 years, um, and only recently uh, moved into the world of, sort of agile delivery. Um, uh, what we do in my team is uh, we look after a number of different software products generally designed to help people manage events on the road space. So we build software products. We uh, also support them. So we've got a front, uh, sort of first line service desk. Uh, we train users on how to use the applications. And we're one of the uh, sort of growing group of uh, people within Transport for London that are trying to deliver things in a slightly different way. And uh, I'm here because WSO2 kindly asked me to do a talk about this, uh, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, so hopefully I can give you some insight into some of the challenges that we've experienced over the last couple of years in delivering this project. So I thought I'd start off with some stats first. So you may have noticed London is quite busy. Uh, so we've got uh, expected population growth to 10 million uh, in the next 12 years. Uh, about 20 million trips on London's roads every day and most of that is on the road network. Um, <clears throat> buses are crucial, obviously, to us, to our operations, so 6.5 million each day. Uh, most of the freight is on the road, and about half a million road works every year, and that's primarily where our, my team come into it, so we help London's professionals across all of the different boroughs manage those works, and for every road works, uh, events, there's about 10 to 20 different data transactions, so there's lots of uh, activity in that area. Uh, and not to mention, there's lots of different people that can actually work on the roads legally. Uh, lots of uh, different actors, boroughs, TFL. Uh, we've got one national specification, which is uh, the electronic transfer of notices, which is an evolution of a fax-based system, which ended up as an XML schema, so it's very sort of arcane and uh, lots of legislation that sort of governs how we work. So in my team, we sort of tend to sort of focus on four key areas. So we help people in London manage the road space uh, in terms of coordination and collaboration. We help people, uh, professionals, reduce disruption by looking closely at how uh, works are actually carried out. We promote safety and we also help the management of the revenue that's associated with uh, fines and, and overrunning works. And these are the products that we use to do that. And I have to apologize, this is done in Microsoft Paint. There's lots of really cool diagrams and uh, presentations with great graphics, and this is not one of them. But I'll, I'll run you through very quickly what each one of these does. So we've got two platforms, London Works and Lane Rental. Uh, and I'm here mainly to talk about London Works. So uh, with London Works, you have uh, the central register, which is a, a pan-London view of all of the roadworks activity across London. You've got the traffic management notification system, which manages permanent changes on the network. Um, you've also got the forward planning tool, which helps with long-term coordination. Uh, so it encourages people to give us more notice than they need to. Um, and then we've got the traffic orders management system, which is kind of as it sounds. It's a, a system that helps our team manage traffic orders, um, which doesn't sound exciting, but what they had about a month ago was an Access 95 database. So we're making some progress there. And there's a, a data loader as well. And uh, I should probably say WSO2 is featured in all of those um, projects uh, and products. So uh, it's certainly in the uh, T-MAN and uh, traffic order systems. Uh, <coughs> the other lane rental uh, platform we have uh, helps us to manage some of the regulations that we've got on some of the busier roads. So certain roads in London, you need to pay a charge every time you work on them at busy times. So we've got a whole range of tools to help us to manage that. Um, so we've got a, an overall sort of system to help us uh, sort of control when people can and can't work on the network. We also have uh, automatic road network monitoring, which is all about uh, tracking motion within, uh, sort of using CCTV cameras and checking that people are actually working when they say they're working. Um, the, our newest addition to that is Roadworks Reporter, which is a mobile app, so we're sort of ex uh, experimenting with the uh, delivery of products in that area and also finance. Uh, and then we have some satellite projects as well, uh, products. So we've got One Road Network, which is a sort of collaboration tool, uh, Slip Number Management System, which is all about looking at traffic management and how that's planned, and Symology, which is uh, our own sort of internal database of roadworks. So there's a lot of stuff that we are using in terms of tools to manage events on the road network. So 
the main focus of this is uh, London Works. So the, the backstory, if you like, is that it's, it's been around for about, well, over a decade. And um, it, it sort of didn't have a, a lot of cultivation over the years. And in 2014, TfL decided to implement a tech refresh, which went spectacularly badly. And so we fixed a few problems, but we ended up um, uh, creating a few more things, fair to say. <clears throat> so um, we uh, managed to get the system back on track, but in 2015, uh, the, the TfL is promoting a Surface ITS uh, program, and that's quite young in, in development. And London Works was um, kind of offered as a pathfinder, so we could use the London Works uh, sort of regeneration project, if you like, to inform the ITS project that's coming down the line in the next couple of years. And we were uh, sort of suggested by our contractors we should use Scrum, which is, was news to me. I didn't quite know what it was about two and a half years ago, and now we're sort of a bit more kind of familiar with it. And this is uh, a quick video of the actual uh, product itself. So this was uh, about nine months of uh, development, and again, about eight or nine months of deployment. And I'll come on to that in a second. Um, it's had quite good feedback um, in, in certain areas. Other areas, we've had really good feedback. Um, it's won a couple of awards, actually, which um, we're quite proud of. So uh, one of the developers, uh, contractors, Esri, uh, they awarded us the uh, Customer Innovation Award recently. And we also won the uh, City in a Cloud AWS Award. So this is all cloud-based, obviously. So it's had some good feedback, but there's still a lot more work to do on it. And um, I'll come on to some of the reasons why it wasn't as good as it could have been in terms of agile delivery. Uh, and as you can see here, we're sort of experimenting with sort of live data feeds, traffic speeds, things like that. So we're trying to give people who make decisions in London much more information about what's actually happening on the street. So thinking about what we went through, there was, um, I sort of broke it down into seven key sort of environmental areas. So contract management, environments, customers, uh, leadership, general application support, uh, project management, and sort of general sort of budgeting and planning. And I'm going to talk about each one of these uh, in a second, but one of the sort of more overarching um, challenges that we had was agile in local government. So we're obviously not a startup and we're not a private company and there's a lot of risk management that happens within local government. So when you're trying to, I suppose, suggest uh, the delivery of an idea, but you're not quite sure exactly what it's going to look like or how long it's going to take, then you generally get the sort of traditional kind of, yeah, we, we need a spec and you know, we, we need to know exactly what you want to do, how long it's going to take. And, and that's a challenge for us. So, so there are some sort of interesting additional hurdles with digital transformation uh, for, for us in, in local government. Um, but hopefully what we can do from this is, and, and we are actually informing other projects that are coming down the line. So we're sort of experimenting with different ways to manage risk uh, and uh, sort of financial um, Prediction, I suppose. So, um, so I'll come on to that in a second. So the first challenge that we had was um, contract management. So obviously, traditionally, we want to know um, if, if you're going to hire a contractor, what, what are they going to do for you? How long is it going to take? How much is it going to cost? So we're sort of uh, trying to work out how to procure services for something that we don't know yet or fully understand. Um, so for us, it's, it's a challenge to, to uh, I guess, persuade the people who are controlling the, the procurement side of things to tell them that actually it is a good idea to not define everything up front and to have a system that allows us to work in increments and to release funding incrementally. So for, for me, it comes down to, a, 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 I, I guess, a, a battle between the fixed price model and the uh, time and materials model. And for me, personally, I think you can manage the risks inherent with time and materials through 
a good delivery of the Agile process because the Agile process obviously is, I'm sure you know, has lots of value checkpoints and stages and, and every step of the way you're able to really understand if you're on track or if you're going off track. So if, if you're investing in a bad idea, you'll know about it quickly. It's the general principle. So, so yeah, so in local government, there's some uh, work that we need to do in that area uh, to really, I suppose, persuade people that we know what we're doing and your money's in safe hands. So the second uh, challenge was um, environments. So as we were building these products um, in parallel, we were also building the strategic platforms that we were going to deploy on. So we didn't have the luxury of doing things in a traditional agile way of delivering a shippable product. So we were building in environments that were essentially sort of test areas rather than in the full environment. So um, yeah. <laughs> what to expect. Uh, so basically expect some, some bugs, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said, the, the environments didn't exist yet. Um, so we had a lot of testing that we were doing at the end of the project, which um, we, you know, we dealt with it. But in an ideal world, we would have had the environments already there, testing, deploying as we go. So, so yeah, that was um, perhaps a project-specific challenge for us. So subject matter experts, um, we were talking about that over lunch, actually. Um, customers, I think, are generally better critics than they are designers. So we're trying to persuade them or sell them the idea, the idea that they're much more involved in the success of a project than they ever have been in the past. So obviously, previously, they just spec out what they wanted and then come back in nine months and probably figure out or, or see that they didn't get what they wanted. And now there's much more of a requirement on them to be much more in, engaged with the development team as we go. And you know that's, that's sometimes a difficult sell because people are busy and they perhaps inherit some of their traditional expectations about how software should be delivered. So we've started to use um, video as, as a method to sort of get over that. So we, we recognize people are busy, so now we're sort of suggesting that output from user stories is delivered as a video chunk uploaded to YouTube as a private uh, channel, not public, obviously. And uh, we're trying to sort of make it easier for customers to be more involved in the process. So um, yeah, we've, we've recently had some, some issues with a particular customer where there's been a breakdown of communication. So I think for us, you know, we know it's a problem, but I think we can do better in that area. And I think that's, that's probably the job for a product owner, really, to, um, to make sure that that is understood. So the next area uh, that I wanted to talk about was the backing of senior management. So we're actually quite lucky in that area. Um, yeah, how to sell them the idea that Agile is actually a good idea. So we were lucky in that they sort of understood that if you're doing something disruptive, and for us in TFR, Agile was quite disruptive and very different from the usual way of working. They sort of understood that there, there were going to be problems. And, uh, and actually, uh, they also sort of recognized that just because something isn't going very well, it doesn't necessarily mean that the Agile process is failing, but perhaps it's more a, a case of highlighting the dysfunctions of everything else around it, which is probably quite an agile evangelical point of view, I suppose. But um, for us, I think we, we did encounter some problems with that sort of clash of cultures. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I suppose if anyone's gone through agile transformation, then that's probably not that uncommon. So the other... Um, challenge that we faced was um, support. So we designed a support model. Uh, well, we got quite a complex support model. So the way it was built was um, we had WSO2 and Esri handling the, the mapping and the forms element. And when it was deployed, the mapping element was given to our own internal technology and data team. And WSO2 remained on as the support control for, um, for the forms and also for the, uh, the middleware that was supporting the, the products. And um, we had to sort of split those two things out. So the way I would prefer to work is more of a Kanban style, 
where you've got a backlog and you're either feeding people new features to build or you're feeding them defects and you're controlling that resource and sort of defining what it is that they do. Um, so that's currently working reasonably well. So we've got a WSO2 resource um, who's um, pretty sort of fully engaged at the moment resolving some of the bugs we've got with London Works. But once that's all stabilised, then we'll be sort of managing the flow of, of um, defects and also new features through that mechanism. But the challenge for us is that we're also working with a more of a traditional kind of SLA-based model uh, with the technology and data team within TFL. So there's a lot of governance that goes on there. So, so for us, there's more work that we need to do to really sort of refine that process of support. So, yeah, for, for me, it's about exploring a, a non-penalty-centric way to do business with your partners. Yeah, so I think it's, it's got legs, it's a good foundation, but there's more work to do there. Uh, the sixth area that I wanted to talk about was um, the difference between project management and, and agile delivery. And I think that they can be sort of counterintuitive. Um, so apologies if there's any project managers in here. Um, I, I have full respect for the uh, discipline, obviously, but it seems to me that the success of a project manager is, is based around the delivery of a plan, whereas obviously with Agile, um, you, I suppose, need to do planning, but not necessarily follow the plan religiously. So um, I suppose I would... I, would, I, would, I guess I would say that the value is in the planning process rather than in the plan itself. And yeah, we need the agility to, to make changes without going through a lengthy process. So th I think there's, there can be a lot of waste in a, in a heavily governed project management process. So uh, the challenge for us there was we delivered the project in a very sort of agile way. Um, and then the deployment, because of the staged approach, because the strategic platforms weren't there when we were developing, the latter part was delivered in a very sequential method. And for me, it was quite interesting to see the contrast of the different kind of delivery styles. So, um, so yeah, uh, you may disagree with that, and I'm happy if you want to shout at me later. But, um, but yeah. So the last area uh, for me that was uh, challenging was budget planning. So again, this kind of comes back to local government being very risk averse. Um, and we're spending public money, so we need to be very careful about where that money goes, obviously. And uh, I suppose my observations were that um, actually you can have too much governance, and that generates waste. So you need some flexibility to, uh, to, to plan. So f for us, it's about, I suppose, changing slowly by giving people who control budgets good examples about why actually iteration is, is a good idea. And I mean, it, I suppose it's kind of ironic in a way that the, uh, the strict process to control how much money you define for a project um, generally doesn't leave people with something that makes them very happy. Um, whereas something which is seen generally to be more risky actually has lots more kind of checks along the way and gives you lots of early outs. So if something isn't going very well, you, you spot that early. So sort of fail fast concept. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's quite a, a traditional view that we're trying to change in TFL. So uh, I just want to say a couple of things about partnerships, because obviously, Anna, thank you, because this was not uh, a sole effort. This was delivered using uh, quite a large team across a number of different organizations. So uh, first of all, WSO2, um, because we're here, I'll put them at the top of the list. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you, really, to WSO2, because um, I found them to be, personally, a good company to work with. Uh, they certainly understand things from our point of view, from the customer's point of view, and they know their stuff, and, and they generally deliver. And from a, from a business perspective, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. So, um, so yeah, they did some great work with us. Uh, but then also Esri, who are the other key player in delivering London Works, they did some excellent work as well. Uh, within the business, within TFL, uh, we've sort of 
uh, become more involved in the delivery of technology. So it's, it's less about specking out what you want and then handing it across to another team. We're much more heavily invested in the day-to-day -day delivery of software. Um, but also working with our colleagues in technology and data, um, we seem to be moving in the right direction generally. Uh, but also, I suppose, uh, a thank you and a recognition to our users as well, who are clearly partners. Um, so they've been very patient and they you know, generally have worked quite well with us and sort of attended much more meetings than they might normally attend uh, in delivering this. So, um, so that was good. And then there's, there's a lot of other partners in the roadworks space at the moment as well. So we've got products in TFL uh, like uh, Surface Playbook. The GLA have uh, another application that um, looks at very, very long-term works. Um, there's a project to map out all of the infrastructure, at the, uh, sort of, which is not very well uh, documented, um, called the London Vault. And uh, then you have Elgin, who sort of uh, do what we do in, in London, but they do it for the rest of the UK. So there's, there's a lot of uh, activity in the roadworks space at the moment. Uh, so I just wanted to end with um, a couple of non-technical observations, because this is obviously a, not a technical uh, presentation. So one thing that... Um, when I look back when we first started the project, what would have really helped us out is a bit more coaching. So I was lucky enough to attend uh, a coaching seminar um, hosted by Lisa Atkins, who's um, very well sort of known, I think, in, in the agile world. And, um, and that was really interesting because it kind of helped me to understand more about the, the human element of delivering software. And I think from a business perspective, it's often seen that software and technology is something that you just deliver and uh, there's a lot more to it so for, for us yeah coaching would have been a uh, an accelerator to to value I think um, also when I look back I, I've had sort of several meetings where you're trying to sort of put forward a view that's not generally um, agreed with <laughs> in terms of how you might want to sort of develop or deploy. And um, I suppose retaining those agile principles and values w for me was quite a kind of a beacon, uh, just to remind me that the stuff I was trying to, d to sort of persuade people to do was actually based on sound principles and reasons. And uh, this was the other thing we were talking about at lunch earlier about um, the fact that software isn't just paint by numbers and having only recently just started uh, to try and learn how to code myself, I can really appreciate what goes into designing you know, a good piece of script. Coding is not uh, created equally. Um, so I think for, for me, being able to explain to my customers or business customers that there's more to it than just sort of specking out uh, a requirement and expecting it to be delivered. It is much more of a creative process, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, um, so yes, there's lots of emotion there and, and embracing. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Um, well, we, we deployed and uh, we, we really just had to, to stage it. So we were building in, in test areas which are relatively uh, separate and what we thought would be near enough what the, the final environments were going to be. Um, then obviously we couldn't really test for load and things like that. So we, we found that there were a lot of issues that we had to re react and resolve quickly. So it it made that deployment process quite unnecessarily unpleasant, I guess. Um, so yeah, in an ideal world, and what we have now is we have everything as it should be. So we can deliver shippable products as you meant to, but uh, yeah, at the time we had to make a few assumptions. So yeah, I'm not sure if that answers your question. We sort of muddled through, I think that's the answer. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, thank you very much.